Chapter 9, Problem 11, Calculating your Net Present Value. For the cash flows, so we have a cash flows for three years. We have initial investment of 19,500 and cash flows for the following three years. And we need to calculate the net present value at a discount rate of 0%. Then discount rate is 10%, 20 and 30%. The net present value of a project is the present value of the outflows minus the present value of the inflows at a discount rate of 0%, only when it's 0%. The cash flows can be added together across time because the present value of any cash flow, if the discounted rate is 0%, is the same. So we can take the all of the cash flows and just add them so the npv of the project at the zero percent will equal minus nineteen thousand five hundred your initial investment plus nine thousand eight hundred plus ten thousand three hundred plus 8,600, that gives us 9,200. So that's gonna be your net present value at 0%. At 10%, the requ a 10% required return, the net present value is as follows. Minus 19,500, which is the present value of your initial investment, plus the present value of the first cash flow, it's 9,800, divided by one plus your interest rate, which is 10% in this case, and that's to the first power plus the present value of the second year cash flow. So it's 10,300 divided by one plus your interest rate to the second power. And plus the present value of the third cash flow in year three, which is 8,600 divided by one plus your interest rate, again, 0.01, which is 10%, to the third power. That's gonna give you 4,382.79 cents. So that's the net present value at 10% required return. We follow a similar procedure for 20% and 30%. So to calculate the net present value when the required return is 20%, we take the initial cash flow, 9,500, plus the present value of the cash flow in year one, 9,800 divided by one plus your interest rate, required interest rate, which is 20.02 in this case, to the first power plus the present value of the cash flow in year two plus the cash flow the present value of cash flow in year three plus 
that gives us 796 dollars 30 cents a, a 30 percent return then pv is as follows it's minus 19,500 plus your present value of the cash flow in year zero yeah, I'm sorry in year one 9,800 divided by one plus your interest rate which in this case is 30 percent to the first power because this is year one plus 10,300 divided by one plus your interest rate to the second power plus 8,600 divided by one plus the interest rate to the third power. So that gives us minus 1,952.44 cents. So notice this, that as the required return increases, the net present value of the project decreases. This will always be the case for projects with normal conventional cash flows. Conventional cash flows are negative at the beginning of the project and positive throughout the rest of the project. So as the required return increases, the NPV would decrease. We can also find the net present value using um, the financial calculator. I'll walk you through the inputs for the TI, uh, the Texas Instrument Financial Calculator. So when the interest rate is zero for the first case, you would do the following you would put you would clear first you would clear everything and then punch in sf0 the cash flow in year zero minus 19,500 remember to put your initial cash flow as negative so minus 19,500 hit enter s0 um, cash flow in year one will be 9,000 800 f01 will be one you leave it one you hit enter s the cash flow in year two you put 10300 f02 is one cash flow in year three s um, c03 is 8600 f03 is one so you're done with all of your cash flow inputs. You hit enter, and at the you put I as zero percent, and then you calculate the net present value, and it's going to give you nine thousand two hundred. And you will do the same thing for the next for the next three questions. All you will have to change is the interest rate. So for the second question, when the required interest rate is 10%, you'll put the same cash flows in, but the interest rate, you hit 10% in, instead of zero. And then the next question, you change it to 20. And then for the fourth question, you change it to 30%. But your cash flows inputs, you can leave them the same. You don't have to change them because calculator saves your inputs.